Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy, and today I'm going to teach you how to use the oil paint filter in Photoshop CC the correct way. Now, if you're following along with CS6, everything's going to be the same. It's just going to be in different spots. But I want to show you how to use it the correct way, like a painter would. And I can talk about that kind of stuff because I used to do that painting thing. So we're going to take this image of this stairwell and turn it into something that looks like this. It looks just like the old painter filter, but there's a lot of really different things going on in here. So let's jump in and break this image down. So I'm going to be covering quite a few advanced topics here as I talk about the oil paint filter. A lot of these topics I've discussed a lot in the recent past. So what I've done is I've actually created an action for you that I'm going to show you at the end of this tutorial that's going to show you how I do all the stuff that I do in this tutorial. But I want you to watch this and follow along with me because the stuff I'm going to show you is extremely powerful. So the oil painting filter in Photoshop is absolutely horrible. I know some people might be like, well, I love the oil painting filter and that's fine. But from a painter's perspective, it's absolutely hideous. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate our background layer here by pressing command or control J and I'm going to go up to filter and I'm going to go to uh, stylize and oil paint. Now, if you're following along in CS six, this is going to be under liquify. If you're following in CS five, it's going to be in something called pixel bender. And unfortunately, because I don't really support CS five anymore when it comes to this type of oil paint stuff I did not include that in the action but it's here for CC and CS6 so in CC you'll find it under stylized oil paint CS6 it'll be under the liquify so I'm just gonna click oil paint and I'm just gonna go ahead and leave these settings I'll just go ahead and press ok you do have some things that you can do here with your stylization by you know if you pull the stylization down it's gonna be less stylized less wavy uh, if you bring it all the way up it's gonna be really wavy cleanliness if you bring it all the way down you're gonna have these really dirty brush strokes you bring it all the way up you're gonna have these nice clean sweeping brush strokes the scale is about the size of those things and the brush t detail does coincide with the shine down here okay so that's the the basic idea behind the oil painting filter so we'll just go ahead and press okay on this I'm gonna point out some things so let me turn the eyeball off as a painter I used to be a painter I painted for several years haven't picked up a paintbrush in a very long time though as a painter I would paint these pillows differently than I would paint the wood effect and I would paint the highlights that were coming through this window very differently than I would paint the shadows over here in the corner but the oil paint filter does it all the same it just it looks like you just slapped on a filter and that's why it looks like crap so we're gonna fix that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and press this little uh, duplicate state here and duplicate this. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer and just make this bigger so we can look at it. So what I want you to do, if you're following along with me, again, I made an action for this. So you don't have to follow along if you don't want to. You can just download the action. But I want you to duplicate this image four times. We're going to go Control J, Control J, Control J, Control J, or Command J if you're on a Mac to duplicate this. I'll double click this top one and call it High Pass. And then I'll call this one shadows or shad for shadows. I'll call this one mids for midtones and this one my highlights. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to break my image down into their highlights, midtones and shadows using blend if and I'm using blend if and not luminosity masks for a very specific reason that I'll tie all this together with. So now that I have them all renamed, I'm going to go ahead and turn the eyeball off on these ones and start with my highlights. I'm going to double click on the highlights to get in blend if now I'm using blend if to segregate these because I'm I don't want to use luminosity masks okay luminosity masks are a static selection I want a dynamic one that's going to change as I make edits after I do this okay so to do this let's go ahead and change the color overlay to a magenta color then we'll go back over here to our blending options and move this one over this is basically showing us where our highlight regions are in the photograph in magenta so I'll press Alt or Option when I get to about right here and just split and feather this so it goes right into my midtones at about the 128 mark. So if you're following along on your own image, that is the highlights, just the highlight area of our image. Press OK. So we'll turn the midtones on, double click it, go to the color overlay, and we'll make this, uh, let's say, blue or cyan. Cyan's a good color for that. And then we'll go up here to our blending options, and just our midtones would be to move this over here about right here, split and feather that. And move that over to just below our midtone areas. Bring this down so it doesn't affect our highlights. Press Alt or Option and split and feather that so it's about right here. So now it's not going to be affecting our highlights or our shadows in our image, and we'll press OK. 
So if we turn this layer off, you'll see that we don't have any of our highlights being affected underneath. That's why we could still see that quite a bit. So we'll turn the mids off, turn the shadows on, double click, do our color overlay, change this color to yellow for shadows, and then go up to blending options and move this down until we get to our shadows. Now I'm not gonna go too far into explaining uh, the blend if settings here because I've done plethora of tutorials on blend if. So we'll just leave it at that. These are the blend if settings for your shadows. So now we've got our highlights, our midtones, and our shadows all set up with their own color previews. We can turn those previews off because we don't need to see those right now. So now with our high pass, what we wanna do is we wanna make this a really strong high pass. So I'm gonna set this to uh, 50%. Start it off at 50%, change this to linear light, and then go up to filter and go to other and go to high pass. And leave that at about the 1.4, 1.5 region area there and press OK. Now, because we don't want any color cast to come through, we're going to press Command or Control Shift U. So, what that's doing is it's actually just a really strong high pass filter that's going to help us get some of those details back in our painted image. So this is the basic setup. So now what I can do is I can come into these highlights and I can go up to filter and go up to oil paint, stylize and then oil paint. And I can make whatever settings I want for just my highlight region here. So let's say I want this lighting effect to be about right here. We want our cleanliness to be about right here, our scale to be rather large and our brush detail to be rather small. Okay. So that's our highlights. We have an oil paint specifically for our highlights. Now notice that I changed the lighting direction here. So I'm gonna go up to the midtones, turn those on, go to filter, go to stylize, and go to oil paint. So now that I'm in oil paint on the midtones, I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm just gonna drop my cleanliness down a little bit. Actually, let me bring that cleanliness up. I like it when there's nice clean brush strokes. Change this scale to something a little bit smaller and maybe make the brush detail a little bit larger in those mid-tone areas, and then we'll adjust the shine there to be a good mid-tone shine and change the direction of the light. So basically what we're doing here is we're changing the direction of the brush strokes, the angle that the brush strokes are being seen at. Now I know that the lighting is different in the image uh, than what, what we're selecting here, obviously, but what this is doing is it's allowing us to change the direction of our mid-tones versus our highlights so that we don't have the exact same oil painted filter for our highlights, our mid-tones and our shadows, okay? And we'll press okay. So now we'll turn on our shadows and again, go to filter, stylize, oil paint. So if you're like freaking out right now and saying, I can't really follow along, all I'm doing here is making some randomly different settings for every one of those layers, okay? So we'll drop this cleanliness down a little bit, make our shadows a little nitty and gritty in there, maybe lower our stylization, increase our brush detail, reduce our shine because we don't really want our highlight area shining too much, and then maybe change that direction to somewhere right here. Uh, we can even change that scale, move it up, move it down, do whatever we want to the scale of that. Maybe bring the brush detail down, cleanliness up. And I'm just playing around. I'm really just moving around until I see something I like and I'll press okay. So now we can see a difference here. If we look at this image and we look at this one, look at this one. All of it has the same oil paint filter going on, but this one, it's all slightly different. Another thing that's different about this one is we already set our high pass up. So I'm gonna zoom in here and show you. We turn this high pass on, look what happens. We get a nice, we get nice little uh, spots where the painter would have gone in and maybe detailed out some of the lines that would be in here inside the stair area here. They get kind of blurred and obliterated. We can turn that on. We get that nice wood grain coming back, especially right in here on the stairs. You can see the wood grain is coming back. And these would be the areas where that painter would go in and really stylize those areas out with maybe a a palette knife or a very small brush to outline the details in the image. Again, something that absolutely fails right here when you just use oil paint by itself. Look at the line work here, obliterated. All, and obviously that's also because we didn't separate and delineate our um, mid-tones, our highlights and our shadows. And you may be thinking, why would we wanna do this instead of use luminosity masks? And I told you that I'd show you why in the end here. So I'm gonna make a, a new layer underneath here. It's gonna be a curves adjustment layer. I'm gonna hit curves. Watch what happens when I do this. I can start painting in this area with light. So if I move this down and make it darker, it's now bringing in the oil painting effect from up here because uh, that area of our image is getting darker. This area is getting lighter. So we end up painting with light, with that available light that's underneath our image. If we were to go down here and make an exposure slider, 
and we move this over move this exposure over it's getting brighter so we're getting more of the highlights coming through it's getting darker so we're getting more of those shadow areas coming through where we oil painted in with our shadows okay and how is this working well let's go ahead and do this let's go ahead and let's see what what do we do here on this one uh, we made this a little bit darker and a little bit lighter so let's go into our highlight areas okay here's our highlight areas if we change this to luminosity we won't get that nasty color effect going on so here are all the highlight areas now that are in this image. Look at our blend if options now. So our blend if is basically telling us I'm applying all the highlights to these areas. We turn that curves adjustment layer off and now it's only these ones. Let's turn this off and let's look at our midtones. Turn that color overlay on on the midtones. Look at how much more midtones are being selected here now or less midtones are actually being selected here now because of that curves adjustment layer underneath. And now let's look at our shadows because our shadows got a little bit darker. Look at how much more of that shadow area is being selected because of the underlying tones underneath. The way Blend If works, it adapts itself to whatever happens underneath. So if you can imagine yourself putting all of these into their own little folder, like we do in the action, all of these would go in their own little folder and be doing their own thing on the other side. And what you do with Blend If underneath will allow that image to shift, modify, and adjust based off of the underlying tones underneath. So you start painting, literally painting with light. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Let's go and delete all this. And I'm gonna come up here to my actions and I'm gonna click on this oil paint blend if. Press play. Again, make sure you're using the one that says CC if you're in CC and the one in CS6 if you're in CS6. So we'll open up this folder and show you what's going on. In the red, we have our high pass. So our high pass can be adjusted if we click on that high pass layer from either 50 all the way up to 100% uh, or down to 0% if you want less detail. So you adjust the detail in your image, your painted image by using that one. So then under here, we have all the painted layers. If you want to do any modifications to those painted layers, go right ahead. These painted layers actually have two oil painting filters per adjustment. So think about what you could do with those. Maybe incorporate some other filtering there uh, with these individual layers as well. Maybe some blurs, maybe some radio blurs. This guy is really the limit what you could do with these painted layers. But then underneath here, you have two other layers. You have a saturation boost, which is going to give it a more painted saturation -y look. If you don't like that, you can turn it off. And then right here, we have the modifying underneath the tones here. So this is where you would come in and start painting with that light so that you could get a really good painted image based off of exactly what you want in your settings. So now let's look at the difference between what Photoshop says with the oil painting filter. If we zoom in here to something like this area where there's a lot of detail and ours. Okay, so we still have some of that pillow detail coming through there and we can even get more of that pillow detail coming through if we bring up that the opacity on that high pass filter. But again, it gets a little little bad in other places. So we'll bring that down to about the 50% mark. But look at this, look at the difference here. Look at the differences between these two. We don't really have any defined shapes there. Here we have defined shapes. This is where the painter not only did a nice painterly effect, but also went in and detailed things out and made it look absolutely gorgeous. So the whole point of this, okay, the whole point of this is I've talked about blend if a lot. I've talked about luminosity mass a lot. I want to pull all this together and show you different ways that you can use this. A lot of questions came through with the last tutorial using blend if and luminosity mass and when to use which. Well, here's a great example of how blend if can be really powerful with its adaptive nature by what's going on underneath those layers that have the blend if applied. The, the main idea here is that the oil paint filter can be a powerful filter to use if you use it in a way that it singles out your highlights, midtones, and your shadows. Or you can take that even deeper. You can go your highlights, midtones, shadows, secondary midtones, however you want to break down your image is completely up to you. But the idea is to break down your image into three different layers, apply the blend if settings for your highlights, your midtones, and your shadows, and then go in each one of those individually and make their own oil painting filter to get that natural brush type look that a painter would get. So I certainly hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Again, my name is Blake Rudis. If you like this, please comment, share, subscribe, tell a friend, and download the actions because they're here for you. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it.